One of them is certainly the interest rate. Okay? The interest rate is the price of money in what sense? It's the price of money today in terms of money tomorrow. So it's the interest rate on a deposit account, which it's how you can transform money today into money tomorrow. So that, I think, is pretty clear for most people with some economics training. But there's a more primitive price that's important that gets neglected, and we're going to pay a lot of attention. And that, that is the price par. This is the price of one money in terms of another money right now, right now, today. So this is about today. This is about the future. For example, you all let me write down this balance sheet without any complaint, and yet what do we have here? We have deposit accounts, money, on this side, and we have cash reserves, money, on this side. Okay? And we take this all for granted um, that they're traded par. That if you have a, an account at Citibank that says $107, you can go to Citibank and they will give you 107 of these dollars. That's par. That's par. And we see in financial crises, sometimes par is broken. Okay? That uh, your bank money trades at a different rate than, than central bank money. This is central bank money here. This is private money. So the system is hybrid. There's private money and there's state money. And that hybridity is masked by par. You think like it's just the same. Okay? And if the system is working well, it is just the same. But that then begs the question, why does it work well? How do we make it work well? What do we do in the case of a financial crisis? So par is actually quite an important price, and it's key to the payment system. Okay? If, you, if, you were, uh, if you're buying something from California, and they said, oh, because you're, in, you're here in New York, okay, we're going to charge you an extra 5%, there's not going to be, because there's not par clearing between, between California and New York, you would be really upset. Okay? But this is how it was in the United States before the Fed. There was not par clearing. Par clearing was created. Par clearing in the payment system in the, in, in the United States was created by a set of institutions, and it is not easy to create this thing, by the way. Because this is like a fixed price. Economists are sensitive enough to realize that. You know, if you have a price there and now you've fixed it at one for one and you're not going to let it budge at all, no matter what the pressure is, that's, that's not so easy. That's like rent control.